So here we are. We're in week three of this I Am series. It's not I Am, there's I Am. It's Jesus saying I Am. And in that Gospel of John, Jesus declares seven statements about who he is with I Am. But also in John's Gospel, he performs seven miracles. There's a real connection with all of that. Before we dive into today's I Am, uh, just to remind you, as I go through things, I'm going to keep things a little bit tighter in detail, but we have opportunity on what I've called more on Mondays, where I'm going to just sit in my backyard with my coffee, my Bible, and I will muse, ramble for a little while. We'll do it a bit different this week than last week, but it's an opportunity for almost me and you to sit across a table and talk more about this. Now, at the same time, we mentioned it last week, go ahead right now, get your phones out, get your camera on, take a picture. Maybe with the TV in the background, you can go and send that in to us uh, at the email on the screen, or you can share it through our social media, just as a way of saying, yeah, I'm here, I'm here. This is how we are gathering together for church. All right, here we go. Got a lot to cover today, but it's really, 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 really significant. These I am's of Jesus, again, it's not about what Jesus can do for you. He can do so much, but this series is not about what Jesus can do for you. It's really a series about who Jesus is, who he said he is, and why he says that. That makes such a big difference. So today, John chapter Eight, the Bible, two main sections, Old Testament, New Testament. The New Testament, like the last 25% of a printed Bible, starts with Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. They're these biographies written by these guys of Jesus' time on earth. We get to John, and John has an emphasis on who he wants to communicate who Jesus is, and that is Jesus is divine. He is the Son of God. He is God himself. And he mentions this word, believe in him, believe 99 times. Let's go with today's John chapter 8, verse 12. Just two verses today. John chapter 8, verse 12. Well, on this part, we'll go elsewhere anyway. Here we go. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Verse 13, the Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. There's so much more, and I'll get into that tomorrow. But here's the statement today. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. But he was challenged by these people who are saying, whoa, how can you say that? I mean, what's the big deal? They're basically saying, who do you think you are saying that? You can't say that. How dare you say that? I'm like, whoa, overreaction. How can such a hope-filled, positive statement stir up such an aggressive reaction? Well, here's the thing today. I'm going to say quite a, a lot of things today in threes. Maybe where you are right now in your living room, three. Threes. Get your hands ready. Threes. There'll be three things I'll say. There's so many collections of threes today. In fact, even John 8 verse 12, there's a three there. I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. There's a three. So here we are, the first Sunday of May 2020. We're here. The significance of what we're going to talk about today is so, so, so on point. I mean, here we are, this first Sunday of May 2020. As I said before, this is the seventh week we've been doing this. And we'll be doing it for many more to come. I know. So here we go. Threes. 
First of all, from this text, I'm going to take you back three steps, three different scriptures. So all these scriptures now are a left in your Bible. Or if that chart right now in the column knows watching that is a disruption, click to Bible and then you can go and look on the text there. So first step left, John chapter 1. Let's go to the very beginning of what John was saying about Jesus. So let's just go there. Let's read John chapter 1, just the first few verses from John chapter 1, I think John 1 through to verse 5. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning, talking of Jesus. Then he goes on. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. And here we go. In him was life, and that life was was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. Jesus, I am the light of the world. He's revealing something, and John has already alluded to it early on. That's step one. Go back now about 700 years. I'm going to go to the book of Isaiah. If you've got a printed Bible, not far off the middle. If you're seeing Psalms, Proverbs, take a right. Isaiah chapter 9. This is 700 years before approximately Jesus has declared, I am the light of the world. Isaiah chapter 9, just verse 2. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of the shadow of death, a light has dawned. Now, the rest of that chapter we often read out at Christmas time. But those verses there, light. Step number three, go right to the very, very, very beginning of the Bible. Genesis chapter one and the first few verses. We'll start at verse one. This is the significance of why there was a response to Jesus, but the significance of this today for all of us. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw that the light was good and he separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. And there was evening and there was morning the first day. Jesus, in saying, I am the light of the world, is going back to the very, 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 very beginning. He's declaring it. That's why those Jewish Pharisees at that time were like, whoa, how can you say that? How dare you say that? Only one from God, truly Messiah, can say that. They were right back in the beginning. Now, what I want to do, those three today, is now lean in and go predominantly like application for you. Genesis 1, verse 2, there's a three things there that I want to lean into, so relevant for today and so relevant for Jesus, the light of the world. Genesis 1, verse 2, now the earth was, one, formless, secondly, and empty, and thirdly, Darkness was over the surface of the deep. Formless, empty darkness. Something that is formless is incomplete and is desiring, craving formation. To be formed, it has no form and it needs form. That's what the earth was like before the creation. It was, there was a desperate need for that. But don't forget our story in that story. 
at times so we are craving a to be formed and we are constantly being formed those of us who are followers of jesus that's what he's doing in us he is forming us to become more and more like those he originally intended us to be there's a formation throughout all of life secondly it says empty some versions say the word void empty i can relate to that right now although i can sense you in the room i am in a big room that is empty and it's no one here is good like it is when it's full you see when something is empty its desire is to be filled we we crave a filling and then thirdly it talks about and darkness was over the surface darkness is only removed with light 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 is the start of all of this light is who jesus is he's the only one who can break into darkness banish darkness for us to have emptiness filled and formless to be formed god did it then right at the beginning formless to formed emptiness to filled with the earth and darkness into light he did it continually and throughout history he continues to do it in humanity in forming things and reshaping things and empty things being filled and dark spaces having light piercing them and now it's the same uh, in this uh, current season that we're in uh, i listened to something this week and was doing some reading and uh, i listened to a really intelligent guy by the name of andy crouch but he got this information from a i wrote it down from an infectious disease specialist from minnesota so the context of minnesota is because of what this infectious disease specialist is saying culturally what is going on right now and it's super interesting with what we're going to lean into it's threes here we go and it's going to relate to the message today first of all this current crisis when it first arrived a number of for us and a couple of months ago when it first arrived in our own neighborhoods what you had was this we responded like it was a blizzard and blizzards can last in their impact a short time maybe even some weeks a blizzard obviously the guy was from minnesota and in a blizzard time we have to go get prepared and we had that little bit of panic and it was a blizzard like mindset we need to just get ready because there's a blizzard and so people responded and for many people myself included our life did not slow down it went quicker a little bit more frenzied there was a a blizzard and culturally we responded in a blizzard and that was initially but you know what we're not in a blizzard because really what we were entering into is into a winter and a winter can last some months blizzard weeks winter months and to be honest that's where we sit right now in this current cultural situation both economically and health wise it, it's a, a a winter it can be a few months but the reality is the more we're in this we see that we're not in a blizzard really or a winter we're entering into something that can have the impact of what's known as a little ice age not a huge time but a an impact of a little ice age it happened in the 19th century a little bit and what you have is this it takes time this can be for the impact of it could last for a year or more in fact everything changes after it so a blizzard a few weeks a winter a few months but an age an ice age a little bit longer now this isn't a doom and gloom thing this is just how we posture ourselves in it but i couldn't help but realize that blizzards can sometimes feel well we can't see any form formless winters can feel very much empty there's not a lot of new life going on and of course an ice age really there's just like a darkness i shared this in the tuesday prayer gathering when a crisis happens we can respond all too often in unhealthy ways 
Remember, Jesus is the light of the world. But an unhealthy way to respond to any crisis in life. And I know for many of you, the, the current COVID crisis really isn't the main pain for you. There's other crises going on in your life. An unhealthy response is we bring on three instincts. Either we fight, flight, or freeze. To put it simple, we fight in that season anger responses. Lots of impatience and anger and I don't want this and we try and fight against it. The flight mindset is an avoidance of it. Sometimes a bit of a denial of it. This isn't really true and we don't fully engage in it because we want to avoid this crisis. And so we la 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 fight, flight, or freeze and freezes, we almost experience a paralysis. We, we like, I don't know what to do and everything is, seems we're frozen. All three are driven and based on fear. Fear is that reality in those three situations. You know, right now, it's like all of the world is experiencing almost this life on earth can seem a little formless because the structures are so different, formless. For life, it can also feel a little empty. There's loss. Things are not there that once were there. There's an emptiness, formless, empty, and it really can feel like we are walking in darkness. We don't know where the light is is going to be arriving, when it will be arriving. Formless, empty, darkness. Cue Jesus. I am the light of the world. He who is with me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. Unbelievable. So three scriptures, here we go again. That was the first one, that John 8, 12. You don't have to turn to these. Uh, Matthew 4, 19, Jesus makes another statement. He says, come follow me and I will make you fishes of men. So the darkness bit, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. What about the Formless. Well, Jesus said, if you follow me, I will make you. I will make you. Let me form you and shape you into who you're intended to be on my mission. Follow me. Be changed by me. Join me in my mission. He makes these statements all the time. It's it's, it's pushing us back to the very beginning again, how things are meant to be. And then Jesus says this incredible statement, in John chapter 10 and verse 10. And he starts off by saying, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy, but I have come that you may have life and life in all its fullness. That word empty. So formless, Jesus can form you and wants to form you and can form you even when it's not going well. That's when he's shaping you. Emptiness, he's saying, I have life for you in all its fullness and obviously darkness because I am the light of the world. It's, it's just brilliant, isn't it? It's just brilliant. And so the hope we have right now in this time, the significance of Jesus saying, I am the light of the world. The people then were saying, who do you think you are? You can't say that. But Jesus, as we are here now, 2,000 years on, he said it, and he is the light of the world. For some of you, the phrase today is Jesus is saying, hey, I'm with you. Go on. Turn the light on. Go ahead. What a difference that would make. So every week, I'm going to ask this question, who is Jesus? But who is Jesus to you today? Is he the light of the world 
And are you walking with him? Because he said, he who walks with me will not be in darkness. But he will have the light of life. Is that true? Right where you are today. Today, have you been living life in a fight, flight, or freeze posture? Maybe there's all kinds of different fears banging on your door, and you're responding with a fight, or a flight, or a freeze, but there is another way, and there is a, by faith, Because of his grace, there is a trust and a receive, a receive the one who can say, hey, I came to conquer darkness. I am the light of the world. The same light who was there at creation. The same light who was promised in the prophecies. The same light who came into the world as John revealed in his first chapter. He is that light. We don't need to walk in darkness. The whole context to when Jesus said that in the light of the world came after the Feast of Tabernacles, that's significant. It comes after he has just rescued a woman who was going to be stoned to death for committing adultery. The context, we'll lean into that tomorrow a little bit more, is startling. So no matter what your current circumstances, he is the light of the world and you can walk in that light. So let me bring us into land right now and say this. Is the light turned on in your soul? Maybe for the first time you want to go, I want to walk in this light of the world with this light. I, I, I don't think I've been walking with him. Well, you can turn the light on today and receive Jesus. And I'm going to pray for all of, all of those who want to do that. I'm going to pray a prayer for you and with you in a few moments. For some of you, you've realized that, you know, right now, I, I, I've not been walking in that light that I should do. I, I've been driven with the fight, flight, freeze mindset or other things are just surrounding you right now. And Jesus wants to remind you, listen, the earth was formless and empty and the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. And God said, let there be light. So your life right now may feel formless and empty and darkness, but the Spirit of God is hovering over and he is there to say, hey, do you want the light on? And he can come into your life and turn the light on. And that which feels formless can start to have formation. That which feels empty can start to be filled because your life walking in darkness need be no more. You can walk in light. The closing song today is so perfect. He is the way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, Light in the darkness, that is who you are. In your homes today, declare that he is. He always was, always is, and always will be the way maker. He always will. He always will be the miracle worker. He always will be the promise keeper because he is the light in the darkness. That is who he is. We can declare that. Invite that faith statement into your home this week. So awesome. But I want to pray right now for those of you who need a, I need the light in my life, maybe for the first time or more. And if this is your first time or you are, I'm returning back to you, Jesus. Go ahead if you're on our chat and click that raise hand button and follow the steps so we can take that journey with you and help you walk in the light of 
Jesus. If you're watching on Facebook, just you'll see a link there. Click that link and let us connect with you because this is a death to life moment, a darkness to light moment. Let us pray, Lord Jesus. I thank you. You were there in the beginning as the light. And I pray right now, Lord, for those people who need this prayer, Lord, forgive me. I recognize that I have not been walking with you. I've been walking in my own way. And that is the the way actually of not with God, so the way of sin. Forgive me. I confess that. I ask for your forgiveness and I say thank you for your forgiveness. I receive the gift of forgiveness, the gift of salvation, the gift of eternity, the gift of walking in the light. And his name is Jesus and walking with him. I thank you that Jesus, you died for me and you rose again for me. I give my everything to you and choose to walk with you. In Jesus' name, amen. That was your prayer today. Please go ahead and click that. If you've got more prayer needs, click that request prayer. We have people praying for you. We will pray specifically for them at our prayer gatherings on Tuesday and Thursday. But right now, in your homes, go ahead and engage and declare the truth that he is a way maker, a miracle worker, a promise keeper. Why? Because he is light in the darkness. Thanks, everyone.